Ezekiel 47, verse 11. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given a salt. What does it mean when they shall not be healed? The souls of all men are spiritually dead and full of woeful distempers until they are quickened and healed by the dispensation of the gospel. The waters of the sanctuary must come to quicken them and heal them. They are distempered, therefore, and woefully disordered before the coming of these waters. What is meant by their sinful distempers not being healed? Look what the waters of the sanctuary come to do. If that is not affected, they are not healed. Now, there are two effects here ascribed to the waters of the sanctuary. They quicken and give new life, verse 9, a natural life they had before, but these give them another life. Number two, healing is the waters of Jericho by Elisha in 2 Kings 2, verse 21, where these effects are not produced. That is the condition described. That is the state of these miry and marshy places. They are not healed. One, men are not quickened. They don't receive a spiritual life. They are not so brought to the knowledge of God. It isn't enough that men have their affections worked upon, or their lives in some measure reformed, unless they are quickened or made alive, unless they receive a new spiritual life by the word. They are as unhealed places over which the curse here mentioned hangs. Number two, the healing of these quickened souls consists in the curing and mortifying of their sinful distempers. This follows the other. Where there is life, there will be healing. Let not men pretend that they live spiritually if their lusts are not healed. If men are proud, worldly, sensual, they are dead also. There is no effect of the waters of the sanctuary upon them. Men are not made holy, humble, believing, zealous. If they don't receive the spirit of prayer and faith, they are not healed. What is the lot or effect and portion of such persons? They shall be given to salt. That is, as I have showed, to barrenness, fruitlessness, unprofitableness, and eternal ruin. This is the meaning of the proposition. And it is a dreadful word, which yet is true, and will prove so at the last day. Woe to the miry and marshy places of the world. Woe to the persons and places to whom and to which the waters of the sanctuary have come, and they are not healed. I shall not need to insist much on the proof of the proposition. The Bible abounds with testimonies of it. But I want to cover three things. One show some places that plainly speak of this truth. Secondly, show the degrees in which God proceeds usually in this great work in giving up unprofitable hearers to their ruin. And three, give the grounds of it. For other scriptures which assert the same truth, take Proverbs 1, 25-31, But you have said it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes, when your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would not of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Proverbs 29 verse 1 He that being often reproved hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Luke 13 6 He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit on it and found none. Number two, for the degrees of rejection, Ezekiel 10, verse 18, chapter 11, 23, and Hebrews 6, verse 8, but that which bear thorns and briars is rejected, 
and is near to cursing, whose end is to be burned. First they are rejected, then cursed, and lastly burned. But number three, that which I shall principally insist upon is to show the ways in which God usually proceeds in giving up such persons to barrenness, and so to everlasting ruin. 1. He cast them out of his care. He will be at no more charge, nor cost with them, nor about them. So Hebrews 6 verse 8, the land is rejected, a docomos. The owner will take no more care or pains about such an unprofitable piece of land. He will till it no more. He will dress it no more, but leave it to its own barrenness. He will sometimes utterly remove the gospel from them, turn the streams of the water of the sanctuary that they shall come to them no more. So he threatened the church at Ephesus of old. Revelation 2 verse 5 Remember therefore from whence you are fallen, and so on, or else I will come unto you quickly, and will remove your candlestick out of its place. They shall have the light of the word no more. It shall be removed and taken from them. Ah, how many places lie under the woeful judgment of God at this day. This sentence of being given up to salt forever. Places are are in this world that have enjoyed the word of God at his appointed season, or at least the tender of it, and opportunities to enjoy it, but continually they were unprofitable under it. What is now their state and condition? God has left them to that sore judgment that they themselves should be made instrumental to cast out the word from amongst them. Like the foolish woman pulling down the house with her own hands, and so they have got darkness for a vision. And they that would not rejoice in the truth and in the light do now through the tremendous judgment of God triumph in darkness and in things of naught.